Hey, welcome to the Parkinson's Gym. I'm Zach, and today we are working on back health and strength and just general happiness. Some of the stuff you will need. You will need a stick of some sort, preferably like a broomstick or a piece of a three-quarter inch PVC. Uh, we'll be warming up with that. You will also need uh, some dumbbells of some sort. We won't use them. Uh, you, you don't have to have them. If you don't have any kind of hand weights or dumbbells or something, that's not, not going to uh, in the world. And you will need some kind of chair or seat. I recommend uh, for back workouts a chair with no back. So I guess a, a stool. Yeah, probably what they call that. <laughs> because the back will tempt you to <laughs> relax. And that's not what we want. We want to work on posture. We want to work on that back staying tall and straight and strong all day long. Of course, have some water and uh, have some kind of a rescue device nearby. If you are alone, especially have some way to call for help, whether it's a cell phone or, or a beeper or a bull horn or a border collie, uh, it, you know, whatever works, whatever works around your house. All right, let's get rocking and roll. You don't need your stick. You really don't need anything just yet. So the key to back health and strength is to understand what it does for you. So, your back holds up the back half of your body. All right, are there any questions? Ugh, it's a lot simpler than that, okay? No, it's not any simpler than that. It's actually a lot more complicated than that. Uh, your back is part of your core. I know when everybody thinks of core, they think of the six pack and they think, you know, looking awesome. And it's not the case. Your core is, is your whole inner cylinder. And I want you to think of... Um, Think of yourself as a cylinder. That might be new to you. But uh, the demonstration I do with a can is exactly that. And if I have it, I'll show it right now. But if I don't, I'll just keep going. <laughs> so your, your body is a cylinder. And as soon as, as that cylinder is not whole, so as soon as that cylinder has a dent from a kickstand that we all tend to do, it's going to have weaknesses. And stress and strain on one portion. So the dent can be on the side from the typical kickstand, or it can be in the front that's stressing the back. And that might be what a lot of you all are up against right now. It can be from carrying an extra little bit of weight up here. And that's going to naturally pull yourself forward and strain your back, roll your back out. Uh, it could be from anything. In my case, I was kind of uh, given a bad back by my dad. And then flying a helicopter for nine years in a horrendous posture. So we had to sit, feet on the pedals, grabbing the collective, hand on the stick, which naturally made us sit kind of hunched over. And of course, the vibration of that generally just packed us down. We all ended up shorter later on. So my back is, is always the issue. But think of that thing as a core. So it is your central area of strength. It is not meant to flex and bend. It does, but that's not the way I see it. That's not where its strength comes from. Its strength comes from staying whole, rotating, and moving around in that whole position. So we're going to work on that today. How do you get to that position? I call it the brace. So let's get started there. First, hands, palms forward. That naturally rolls your shoulders back where they should be, back into the pocket so everything is stacked right on top of each other. Head, shoulders, hips, feet, everything nice and vertical row. Now, tighten your butt up just as tight as you can. That sets your hips into the correct position. Now, bring your ribs to line up with your hips. So your ribs and hips should form that cylinder. You can relax your butt, but now tighten your abs. I don't know, 10, 20%, somewhere in there to hold that strength, that cylinder. That puts your back in that S curve, that shape that we want, and it holds your body as a cylinder. So you now may, may be noticing that up, 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 set, boop, you're even stalling. You're even standing taller already. Good. Hold that all the time. All the time no question when you are picking something up hold that position that back when you are moving when you are sitting down hold that position when you're sitting down as you're sitting down the entire time 
Very important. As soon as you, you've created a strain, you've created a weakness, and everything starts to go south after that. Okay, so another big thing is for a lot of sports, the key, a lot of movements, a lot of everything, the key is shifting your body weight around. Now, it took me a little while to realize that. So most people think batting or just, is just hand strength or, or boxing or golf or pretty much anything is all arm strength. It's not. It's your ability to control your core, your center of gravity, everything about that center moving around and rotating and using your weight into the sport. Big deal. You can't do that if you're all crumpled over. So think about it. You're up or you're twisting. You're never leaning. Mm. Okay, let's get on with this. Everything about what we do is going to be individual to you. If something doesn't feel right, if something makes your back hurt more, don't do it. Or check what you're doing and make sure you're doing exactly right. But this is a fairly individualized thing. So take what I say today, take what we do today, and apply it and make your own workout and add them into your workout as just sort of your general back strengthening, core strengthening routine. All right, here we go. Let's start out rolling things out, just get them warmed up. That's key for me. All the way up and just gradually fold everything over, roll it out nice and easy. Oh yeah, my back is tight. All right, we're not stretching, you're just hanging, okay? Unroll all the way up. Shoulders back, stand tall, engage that core, engage that brace, okay? All the way up one more time, and back down. Brr, relax the brace. And now unroll, engage the brace. Shoulders back, abs tight, ribs aligned, but tight, there it is. Okay, it seems like a lot right now, but you'll get it. I just realized, I said, don't ever do this, and then we, we did that. <laughs> but part of our warm-up, I do like doing that because it rolls everything out, gets all the muscles kind of activated, and start it up. Roll one more time all the way back up, engage the brace, and there we are. Okay, straight up, reach one hand and reach the other hand. Oh boy, reach one hand and I want you to pull this rib, pull this shoulder down to your hip to sort of make that those muscles start moving and start engaging and loosen up your back a little bit with no weight. We're doing this totally unloaded and at your range of motion. We're not forcing this to go further than it can. And I never want you to do that, especially when your back is involved. Never force yourself to move further than your back should, whether it's a stretch or yoga or, you know, a drawn and quartered. It's always just a bad idea. Reaching forward, reaching forward. So you're twisting again, right over top of your feet, center of gravity stand right dead between your, your feet and you're rotating. Try to get a good 90 degree turn, side to side, hand forward. So maybe if you're with me a good bit, this all might seem so familiar. And now you're like, oh, that's why he does this all the time. <laughs> Keep going. Keep at it. Back and forth. All right. Back tall and engaged. Again, palms forward. Pushes your shoulder back. Everything's nice and lined up. Get your stick. I think the stick is one of the greatest ways, greatest inventions <laughs> for uh, back exercises. So one more time, take it right in front of you, <clears throat> your stick, and roll it forward. Roll out your back. Easy, 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 easy. And what this stick does, make sure it's parallel to the floor. This kind of keeps everything nice and symmetrical about your spine. Now there's six long muscles, and while I tell you this, do that fold over one more time. Three on each side that run basically the entire length of your back, from the base of your skull all the way down to the, the crest of your hips, and uh, the erector spinae. That's what we're kind of waking up with this. Uh, those usually aren't uh, the cause of back pain. I mean, it's not that they're, they won't be, but those are the ones that are going to hold you all the way up tall. Straight up. Lean into it. 
back and forth nice and easy. Lean in, long stretch through one side. Easy, easy, easy. Now, if this hurts your shoulders, I want you just to go as high as you can. Press straight up as high as you can. But if not, straight arm, kind of pull yourself over and pull a little bit more. Pull and pull. All right, down to your chest. Push it apart. Roll your back, pull your shoulder blades apart. Now pull it back together and reinforce that standing up tall. Go terrible posture, now go good posture. Terrible posture, good posture. Terrible posture, good posture. One more time, push it as far away as you can, hold for a second, and pull back, stand tall. All right, <clears throat> let's do some rotations. If you can, I want you to put the stick across your shoulders. If that is not comfortable for your shoulders, you can just hold it straight in front of you or put it behind you through your elbows like this, like some sort of medieval restraining device. But what that does is it locks your shoulders into place. And I just want you nice, even rotations, again, right over the center. Imagine that stick is running right down head, hips, floor, and you're just turning about that stick. Go as far as you can, passively one way, meaning I don't want you to push yourself any further with any external devices. Passively one way, back around passively the other. The internal and external abs um, muscles in here are the ones responsible for all that, as well as in your back. So twisting is an important part of what we do. So we gotta get that warmed up and working in the correct posture. Ah, that's the deal. Here we go. Rotations. Um, just one more time straight over the front. We'll get into these side slides. Oh yeah. Back up. All right, turn 90 degrees to your left. Slide down the stick, down the outside of your body. Kind of focus on the lower opposite side of your back. Easy, easy stretch. Be super crazy nice. Don't push anything past where it should be. Other side, down, easy. Back up. So never do this with anything heavy. This stick is just keeping your shoulders locked into a certain parallel shape Con counter to your hips. One more time the other side. All the way up tall, straight over the front. So the stick is just kind of a prop. It should not have hardly any weight to it. Come back to the front. Let's get everything perfectly symmetrical down the center of your spine. And back up tall. All right. The javelin stretch, I call it. Stick straight into the floor, both hands on top. Hinge at your hips. Now, I would like to introduce you into the phenomenon called the hip hinge. It's long, straight, try to push your head through your shoulders. Now stand up tall and kind of push back a little bit, bring your hips through. All right, hip hinge means the only thing moving is your hips. Your back does not change shape. You keep that perfect S curve, your legs stay straight, and stand back up. Huh? Right there is your pivot point. Over and back up. All right, let's take that, take that motion into what is called a good morning. No idea why it's called this. Again, if you can, rack your uh, stick over your shoulders. If not, just hold it forward and that'll keep your shoulders nice and steady. But what we're doing here, a perfect hip hinge. Back stays straight, legs stay straight, but goes back. It's not a bow. Go to wherever your hamstrings tell you that's far enough and then stand back up. So you're not going forward, you're kind of accordioning. The stick stays over your center of your feet and you stand back up. Hmm? Pretty good. Straight over. Back up. You should feel your hamstrings tighten up. Easy little stretch there. And then back up. All right, we're going to combine those good mornings with the rotations for what I call the windmill or the golf swing. <clears throat> now, if this is at all questionable or painful for you, 
don't do it. Sit here and watch me. Have a drink. Do your thing. But if this is like, eh, don't worry about it. But I want you to take your right hand and point at your left foot. So it's kind of a fold as well as a twist. Your goal, now take left hand pointed at the right, is to get the stick perfectly vertical and back up. Okay, from the side-ish, right hand to left, and up, left hand to right, and up, right hand to left, hitch, hinge at your hips, back up, left hand to right, foot, and back up. So you kind of see how that's a combination just between a regular standing rotation and the hip hinging good morning move. Hmm? It's all coming together. All right, pull it all back together nice and tall. I believe that's it with our stick. So you should feel a little bit loosened up, a little bit warmed up, and uh, maybe grab a drink of water. So you've most likely heard about deadlifts and squats as being like the bro, the power lift. Um, it is an Olympic lift, both of those. They are important and they are good. They are very good back strengthening and core strengthening exercises because they use pretty much your entire body. So let's get into the squat. This, the squat is a little bit more legs, but of course it uses the largest muscle in your body, your glutes. But the biggest deal is Hips hinge, knees bend, ankles move a little bit. You stay centered, the weight stays straight over your feet. Your back does not change shape. Okay, get that brace going, but ribs and abs, or excuse me, ribs and hip lined up, tighten your abs, shoulders, back. We're set for the squat. Let's do nothing right now. Hands are down by your side, and butt back, little bit of knees, hands are straight over your center of your feet, your back is still straight. Stand nice and tall. If you caught yourself doing this, don't do that. <laughs> Shoulders wide, straight over your front, and back up. You should be able to look up. Now I don't want you doing this, but I want you here. And straight back does not mean vertical back. Your back is staying straight the entire time. Back up. If you can go lower without your hips rolling under, do it. But what I mean by hips rolling under is you hit the bottom of your range of motion for your hips and boop, your back rounds out. And back up, see the difference there? I hit the end of range of motion for my hips and my butt sort of winks under. That's what they call that butt wink. Terrible name, a couple more of those. Hands straight down over the center of your feet like at your shoelaces. Back up tall. Down, back up tall. Here's something you can do with your stick. Put down your weights if you're holding them. Stick running down your back. And you should be able to do that squat with the stick staying in that three points of contact. Head, shoulders, hips. Down, up. See how that works? If you notice that your back rolls and it comes out of contact with your hips, fix that. Keep your abs tight, hinge, stand, hinge, stand. Hmm? Feeling better? It'll work better. Okay, so that is your squat. Let's grab some weights. Ah, as you pick up your weights, use good form. A lot of people, they're, they're like, perfect exercise, a perfect form. You go, okay, pick up your weights, and they go, and all, everything comes to pieces, and they look Cro-Magnon. Straight down, back straight, pick it up. Here we go. There's your first squat. All right, kick that brace in. Shoulders up wide, butt tight, ribs aligned, abs tight. Straight down over your shoelaces. Down, up, down, up. Back's perfectly straight. Hit hips back, up, back, up, back, up. Couple more. Back, abs tight to keep that brace. Two more. Up, down, 
up. I call these luggage squats because it's kind of like picking up luggage, which is a very normal daily activity if you travel a lot. Or grocery bags, okay? That's your squat. Difference in a deadlift is your deadlift is in front of you because not everything is perfectly manageable by your sides. Deadlift is typically a bar straight in front of you. And this uses much more of your glutes than your quads. The squat was a bit more quad. Because of the location of the weight, the deadlift is a bit more glutes, which is a bigger muscle, so this is a stronger move. Butt hinges back, straight over your feet, straight up and down. Your arms should be totally relaxed. Down, back straight, abs tight, pull it off the ground, all the way up. Down, up. Where are you feeling this? Should feel it in your glutes, in your butt, not in your back. If you're feeling this in your lower back, you're not bracing, you're not hinging. Focus on that hip hinge and your abs stand tight the whole time. Stand all the way back up. This takes some learning. A few more deadlift, straight up, down, and straight up. Good. This takes some learning. It takes some practice. It is, uh, you're having to break years of potentially bad habits of shoulders forward, back low, um, back rolled. All right, set those down. You got a lot of habits going on. Standing like this with a, a dent in your core or your shoulders rolled over and your back rolled. I went through most of my high school days with no shoulders. I was, I was built like a bullet. Still, still am a bit. Okay, hip hinge. Uh, all right, so we have some accessory uh, exercises. Those two, the squat and the deadlift, are, are your, your biggest ones you can do, the best ones you can do. Keep that solid form and your whole body is engaged. Now the accessory stuff is just kind of in addition. Little, uh, you know, it's the, the sprinkles on top of the uh, glute sundae. Ugh. You know, you say something, you wish you could just unsay it all of a sudden. All right, so what we're gonna do, let's start out, you're gonna need your, your, your stool or your chair and have a seat. Hop, wait. Hips back, back straight, touch down, stand up. Oh, sit up, not stand up. Hinge forward, press the floor away, and you're up again. It's just a squat. So I've noticed something. I'm just going to kind of randomly bounce around here, apparently. Uh, Americans have a problem sticking their butt out the back, and it makes them feel kind of crude. So we tend to squat like this. Knees way forward, up on our toes. And what we end up doing is having a lot of knee and back problems. If you can learn to squat and sit with your butt, both your knees and your hips will be saved. Gotcha? In, in, they call it the third world squat, of being able to squat straight down to the floor with their feet flat on the floor. It's very difficult if you've not been doing it your whole life. But learn how to do it. One more thing I forgot to mention about the glutes the deadlift and the squat. Stand in front of your chair or your stool and do the squat. Your knees should not come forward. If your knees go boop, you're not hip hinging enough. You're not pushing your butt far enough back and stand it back up, okay? If you catch yourself knees forward, that's where some knee problems can begin. Butt back and back up. Good? Good. All right, accessory exercises. This is very interesting to me, so I tend to bounce around with all sorts of crazy ideas and stuff. Okay, sitting up tall. This one is uh, called thighs to flies, and you'll see why. Arms straight out in front of you, a la Frankenstein or a zombie. I want you to fold over, and this time you can let your back kind of roll out. Fold over, touch your fingers to the floor, and as you sit back up, Arms go out to a perfect fly. And that just reinforces that stand-up movement. Okay, floor, fly. Straight up and down. Floor, fly. Boop, 
floor, thighs, all the way up, flies. No weights, nothing needed on these. You are just emphasizing that movement of standing yourself all the way back up, of building the structure around your skeleton all the way up. So your skeleton is fantastic. It does great things. It's a natural, amazing thing of nature. But without good muscular um, structure around it, it's, it, you know, it's, gonna, it's not going to do much. All the way forward. A couple more of these thighs to flies. Thighs. Flies. Last one. Thighs and flies. Awesome. Grab some light, light weights, if any weights at all. I'm just going to use like three pounds. No biggie. Back down to your chair. Butt back. Boop. You're down. These are called Frankensteins. They're very similar, but they're going to put a little bit more demand on those erector spinae muscles right down the sides of your spine. So again, fold over forward, touch the weights to the floor, and as you sit up, keep your arms straight in front of you. Sit straight up, arms parallel to the floor, back down. Unfold. Fold. Down. Oh, you feel that? Up. And if you feel that and it feels terrible and deeply painful, don't do this, okay? You don't need to hurt yourself. We got plenty of other ways to hurt ourselves. Exercise should not be one of them. All the way back up, nice and tall, abs tight. Back down. Up to Frankenstein. And back down. One more. Ooh, I can feel that. Up. And down. Good. All right. Wow. I can feel that. Even seated. Palms forward, shoulders back, hips straight. It's kind of hard to flex your butt. Well, you can while you're seated. Abs and or ribs and hips lined up, and there we go. You're sitting up tall. You should not look like, you know, some insane military um, person. I don't know. Nobody really in the military sits like Well, the cadets did, unfortunately. But you should just look pretty comfortable just sitting up. It should not feel, uh, it may initially, but after a while you'd be like, I don't really need the rest of this seat. You can take it away. You're just right on the edge, right on your hip bones. Good to go. Okay, rows. Seated or standing rows are quite good for your back because you're doing something else with your shoulders while your back is supporting you and your abs are engaged and it's just sort of a static uh, exercise. So uh, let me show you what I mean. Pick up your weights again. Stand up if you're comfortable with that. If you're not, we can definitely do this from seated. So boop, up. All right. Hinge forward. Hinge. Abs or knees are soft and you're going to row. So I've got that stick running down my back nice and straight. Eyes forward. Row your shoulders back. Let them out. Back let them out, back, let them out. Hold your butt sticking out the back. You should feel your glutes engaged, maybe in a little stretched. And down, forward, down, pull, down, pull, down. Let's get two more, two, and one, done. Hinge it back up. Oh yeah, back's working. Very, very robotic, very mechanical feeling. This doesn't feel smooth and graceful and natural. It feels very mechanized. But that's how we're built to work through our core. Unless you're an impressionistic dancer, then you're built like Gumby. All right. If you have bands, now's a good time to drag them out. If you do not, it is not a big deal. If you happen to have bands, I want you to go hook them up to a meh, shoulder chest height uh, anchor. And uh, let me show you what we're talking about here. So I happen to have it all set up. Okay, so that band is perfectly out your right or left side. I want you to bring it straight in front of you. 
hold that perfect brace and just keep it there. So it is trying to turn you to your right. You're holding it directly in front of your sternum. Now this is a different angle of resistance than we're typically doing with the straight up and down. This rotational, it's important too. So just hold it. If you want to, throw some uh, spice into this, pull it into your chest, press it back out about every 10 seconds. And all you're doing is holding it. It's just a stiff hold. It's called a payoff press. Pull it in, push it out. All right, add a little sauce to this. Rotations. Your shoulders, this rack, this triangle in your shoulders, hands, shoulder, shoulder, stays perfectly straight and all your rotation comes from the center. And as always, your center of gravity is right down between your feet and you're just rotating about that stick running down your back. Rotate, back, rotate, back, okay? You're not pushing way over here and leaning. You're not letting it drag you across the room. Twist and rotate, okay? Both sides. You go ahead and do both sides. <laughs> Otherwise, you'll have to look at my butt the whole time. So I'll let you do both sides uh, later on when you see everything else that we're doing. Okay, so that's really all we need from the... Well, there's all sorts of variations of rotation. You can do it like a punch. You stand in your boxing stance. You pick a target over there. From your shoulder, push and rotate, and back. That's a good boxing punch. Shoulder, push straight through, body rotates up on your toe, and your back. Okay, your whole body's throwing that punch. It's not just boop. It's and your back. Rotate back, staying right over your feet. Back. Sound effects help. I'm here to. I'm, here, I'm just here to help. Okay. Um. All right. Last few things. Everybody's least favorite exercise: the plank. Now, the plank is a static. It is. Re, it is strengthening your core muscles just to stay straight. So that is a front static movement, obviously. You're face down. Let me demonstrate that um, just on a chair. Now, you don't have to do a plank on the floor. You can do a plank on a chair, on the back of the couch, even on a wall. Just lean into the wall a little bit. But your plank must look like this. Hands or your shoulders are over your hands. Your hips, shoulders, and heels make one straight line. If your butt's in the air, you're not reinforcing what you want to reinforce. Hips straight, body straight, just like you're standing up, but you're not. So hold this, breathe. Here are all my tips and tricks for planks. Already got one. Keep your shoulders directly over your hands, if at all possible. Now up against the wall, that's gonna be uh, extraordinarily difficult, but on the floor, hands down, straight underneath your shoulder, and you're right there. If you're here, that just makes it harder. <laughs> Don't need to make it any harder. Here gets a good solid over your core, good solid uh, structure over your core. Right here gives you a good solid structure over your shoulders so your abs can do the work. And you just hold, no big deal. Up on your toes, head up straight, don't sag through, don't let your butt sag, don't stick your butt up. It's just boop, called a plank for a reason. All right, some variations on the plank are what I called the dynamic plank. Moving your hands or your feet around um, to make your body, make your core respond to changes in your center of gravity, changes in the structure. So you can do stuff like pledge planks, touch, touch. You don't want to go touch, touch. I'm not sloshing around. Doop, boop, boop, boop. Try to keep your shoulders and hips as steady as possible. You can do kicking planks. Great for the glutes. Boop, kick, kick, kick. Everything else perfectly straight. Nothing moving as much as possible. All over the place, wherever you want it. If you want to reach out beside you, for a plank, flying planks, I'll call them, side, side, Superman planks, forward, 
forward, Macarena planks, head, head, shoulders, shoulders, hips, hips, butt, butt. That is one of my favorites. You run through five or six iterations of the Macarena plank, <laughs> you're doing really good. <laughs> so, all right, so you want to do that? Here we go. You're in a plank. You're going to go head, head, same side of your head, same side, same side, opposite shoulder, opposite shoulder, opposite hip, opposite hip, same side butt, same side butt. Let me show you again. Here we go. Ready? Macarena plank. You're going to go head, head, shoulders, shoulder, uh, hip, hip, butt, butt. So straight side, straight side, across, across to your shoulders, across to your hips, across to your hips, back to your butt, back to your butt. Love that one. Love it. <laughs> it's dopey. It's helpful. <laughs> People are like, you look like an idiot. Well, then we'll try it for a little while. It's a lot harder than you might think. All right, standing up. Let's review. Everything about back strengthening is individual to you, your strength, your structure, your injury, your history of your back. Um, but the brace, tight butt, ribs and hips aligned, hold your abs. That brace needs to be a part of your life 100%. Shoulders wide, everything stacked up. If you ever catch yourself, you know, you get tired and you're here, all you got to do, and you're back up. Okay, there's your brace. You get that S curve in your back. The, uh, what is this? Top of your back, <laughs> lower lumbar. So uh, you get that perfect S curve through your shoulders. And straight doesn't mean vertical. Strong back. You can have a strong back that's horizontal to the ground and straight back up, okay? Straight's not vertical. And twist, turn, golf swing, whoo, baseball swing, punch, pitch, all twisting, not leaning. If you catch yourself, if you're falling through, hockey, if you're falling through, your, uh, your movement, you're leaning and not twisting. All this strength is channeled from your legs, through your core, to your arms, to the baseball, to the puck, to a face, whatever it takes. All right, that was a lot in no particular order. I tried to structure that, but there's a lot to say. I hope you will use all this. I hope it will help, but you've got to make it part of your daily life and pretty much part of every workout that you do. All right. That's what we got. This is a Parkinson gym. I do this because this stuff works. All right. We will see you back here next time. Bye.